how do you start something like this off? Like, how can you explain it? The earth is fucking broken. Yeah, I'll just try. Uh, my best. We're sorry. Oh, oh, my God. God. oh my God. I'm scared. Last year, my, my friend was credited with the experimental film Holographic Dreams. It participated in the 2020 All-American High School Film Festival. I probably came to the wood around like December of 2019 with the idea. Uh, it was it was pretty simple, but he didn't really understand it at first. Uh, I just needed him to record the behind the scenes for an upcoming film, Holographic Dreams. The confusing part was that it's not really a, a real film. I had no idea what he was talking about. Like literally no idea. Let, let me show you exactly what he was. This is what he sent me. There's this movie that I wanna make. I want you to do the BTS of the movie because the movie's actually fake. We submit this movie to All American and the next year we submit your BTS to All American as well. Now, this is where it gets tricky. The first film, the experimental film, it's fake, but your BTS, that's the real film. That's the main film. Does that, does that make sense? What the f does any of that mean? I had a thesis. Does intention matter? Experimental student short films always kind of rub me as pretentious. So, can I make a fake experimental film that doesn't mean anything, and can I get it selected into the world's largest high school film festival? matter in art or is you know a film's worth judged by what the audience gets out of it because hypothetically if the judges watch our piece of mm -hmm. movie and come to some catharsis even though it wasn't our intention that's still kind of like a poetic way. in a way yeah if intention matters then that won't work but if it's audience interpretation then it will work like what does film what does a real film mean so what would be the most crazy f***ing idea like we could think of? Like the like let's the, let's start putting those things you're putting down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So multiple dimensions. Like, yeah. But I do love I love the idea of sin, time, death, yeah. and life. We had no idea what the film was about. We were like, what if we make it about God? <laughs> I think we should have one character, one person's direct like conflict with all this. Let's put a max on it for like four minutes. I should write the script so it's not too long. Okay, yeah, so we don't have to film too much. Right. You just shoot random stuff and then put up this this narrative voiceover on top that suggests all of these okay. and talks about these deep themes when in reality there's no there's nothing there. Uh, I think we can pull this off. It's just that we need to like yeah let's start writing. So that's where we started, you know, 20 minutes to write the script, and after that, we just film whatever script we had. Three, two, one. I'm not gonna lie, I've been thinking, and throughout Dude, this entire experience, I think that this film's gonna be, uh, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. Cut to interior office building day. Chairs are lined up as the kid sits in a small chair in the back of the room. He watches another person give a presentation at the front of the room. The lights begin to flicker and they cut to the tears straight deep day. A baby doll is burning. It's just <laughs> burning. That's really all that is happening. <laughs> Hello, Mom. Um, can we use a plastic doll and burn it for our film? Just like. Hey, you can take your doll, sir. So, is that enough? Let me see. All right, setting up the first shot of the day. Yeah, I gotta get more. Setting up clip. the board. With the script finished, we quickly shifted our focus to filming holographic dreams, and with the help of Ryan and Shruti, we began to decorate and set up the office for the film. But as we started filming the shots, something began to stick out to us. We should definitely focus, Paul. Though, dude, we're, we're trying. 
This is like, we're doing like... <laughs> there shouldn't be a meaning behind us pulling the focus. Okay, oh yeah, why are we taking this seriously? Hold on. <laughs> okay. Just as we were beginning to find the balance of not trying and still making the film look good, the energy of our crew started to fade with the Texas heat and overall confusion of the project was taking a toll. Dude, okay. why is making a fake film so hard? <laughs> it's 90, it's 90 something degrees. Texas weather is... I hear my ears ringing. We're just so burnt out. Dude, I, we were so high energy in the morning, like so hyped and everything. It, I mean, at a certain point, you just like, re, like ask yourself, is it, this, is it worth putting this much effort into a film that like you don't care about? We're doing, we're doing life, death, and religion. The three big R's. And birth. Birth, apparently. <laughs> Wait, death is not a... For the following shot, we have no idea what we're about to do, but uh, let's just improv this and uh, see what happens. And no matter what, we're gonna include this scene finally. So this was in the final film. Yeah. <laughs> you guys need to see that. The gravity of our situation began to set in. What the f were we doing? We were hedging our entire film on the chance of making it into All American, not realizing that one decision would affect our entire experiment. And if this decision wasn't in our favor, then all of this would be for nothing. I love this because it, it looks like it's saying something, but in reality, it's saying nothing. We filmed the film that we wrote, in that you wrote in 20 minutes. We did. Yeah. That was a bad script. We wrote the film, we filmed it, we finished editing. Holographic Dreams was finished. But it was nowhere near over. Before the announcement of All-American's acceptances, we wanted to get other opinions on the film. The entire point of the Holographic Dreams experiment is seeing the immediate audience reaction. If they would see through the film or see something in the film. Nice. Okay, thoughts? My thoughts, uh, I thought it was very intriguing. It was a little unsettling at some time. And I don't know why Jackson's face is scribbled out. Is he God? There was a lot of like multiple layered metaphor, you know? Like the stair, the stair being like a metaphor for, you know, the stairway to heaven. Well, that was a nice, good reflection on yourself, because if you can get into heaven, do you answer or do you leave the call? So is that what you believe it is? That's what I believe it is. I think the very act of you trying to make some kind of political message by saying, hey, what is art, is already art. Tell them now, let's do it. All right, guys. Then, okay, first off, thank you for everyone's appreciation of the film. Uh, and I guess we're sorry. The film's fake. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. It's like complete absolute <clears throat> bullshit. The question was, can I get into a film festival with a film that doesn't mean anything? Wait. Wait. Wait a second. It's a movie for my family by Nate Simon. Holland Draft. Get it! I thought we proved our point. We got into the festival and we were planning to send basically what was a We Fooled You film to All American next year. I thought we were done. What happened? We were wrong. Fever Dream by Hugo Long. A movie for my family by Nate Simon. Holographic Dreams Promise by sense. Satvik Shankar. I didn't answer. Oh! Let's go! Let's go! It's weird, uh, you know, because people really like Holographic Dreams. You know, in some cases, they like it more than our other films. And it got to the point where I kind of stopped telling them what was really going on. Because, I don't know, it felt kind of mean, you know? It's like, they, they, they were enjoying something, you know, why, why take that away from them? You know, it's like, oh, you like this thing? You shouldn't. Like, there, here's a reason why you shouldn't. It, it just felt kind of mean. What we were trying to do was just inherently wrong. If the judges of All American gathered real meaning from our film, who the am I to tell them that what they felt was fake? Don't get me wrong, I don't now take credit for Holographic Dreams. Now that it got a nomination, I don't suddenly say 
that it's my film. You know, I don't take credit for the nomination or any other potential accolade I could receive, because honestly, I think the film stands on its own. You know, not as a work of mine or Dwoods or Gopals, but something that belongs to the audience, you know, or more specifically to the audience's interpretation. This documentary isn't about a film festival anymore. It isn't about ego or uh, pretentiousness. It's about the human reaction to something. It's like the art of nature and it's the nature of art. I don't know if we can use that. That sounded really pretentious. <laughs> Oh, what's good, man? Hey, Jackson. You won't believe this. What? Holographic Dreams got into South by Southwest. Did it actually? Are you lying to me? Yo, I swear to God, I'm not lying. Oh, dude, no way. Yes, way. Oh, my gosh. 